CJ, I've forgotten my lines. Mother Where is my phone? You have it, don't you? Why do you have my phone? What are you taking on my phone? Oh my G'day guys, welcome back to Millionaire by 50. In today's video, we are going to be looking into the man, the myth, the legend himself, Scott Pape. Now, for those of you that don't know, Scott Pape is the author behind The Barefoot Investor. It is a massive book here in Australia and it's an Amazon bestseller. Uh, this book differentiates itself from other finance books because instead of just giving vague analogies like some second rate YouTube show, Scott Pape actually goes into detail of how you can get your finances in order. And when I talk about detail, I'm talking about a level where he's basically saying, set up this bank account, go with this superannuation fund, call these people up and say this exact script. It is precise. So what I need to say is no matter what we do in our videos to come covering this book, it's never, ever, ever going to do it justice. You really need to go and pick the book out yourself, have a bit of a read of it, and then come back here and we'll go through the barefoot journey together. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, so now that you've done that, I'm just gonna say, like, we're not in the caveman era. We're not gonna wait any longer. You can just pause the video, go do that, and then now I'm just assuming that you're back and you've, you've, you're, you're ready to go. So, as you've probably read, the Barefoot Investor is broken up into three different sections. So it's the uh, plant, grow, and harvest. Now, each of these sections have, like, three different steps to it. And we're gonna go through each step, and then at the end of it all, we'll have a bit of a talk about you know, how we thought things went, how helpful we thought it was. And um, so the step, first step in the Barefoot Investor path is to set up Barefoot Investor date nights. And Scott Pape recommends that you do this uh, once every week for five weeks. And then following that, you can scale it back to monthly if you don't want to be talking about your finances every, you know, Sunday and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and see how that works out for us. So. We're continuing the steps of the Barefoot Investor. So far, we're doing pretty well with step one. I've scheduled the Barefoot date nights. I've got my boys with me, which, I mean. <laughs> so I've got my boys with me. All right, everything's going well so far. Now we need to find out what's next on the Barefoot menu. CJ? Perfect. What have we got? So barefoot banking, so that's 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 a lot, like this could almost be like its own entire video. So setting up the accounts that would have been. I wanna have a look at like the banks myself, like I just don't wanna take like you know his word for it, so let's have a look. This this could this could pretty much be a video on itself. CJ, can we cut to an animation? Okay, so for Barefoot Banking, Scott Pape recommends that you go with ING. Why? Because ING has high interest rates and they have literally no ATM fees at this point in time. So if you were to go overseas and you were to, you know, take money out, you would get charged, but then they rebate that back to you as long as certain conditions are met. But hey, don't just take my word for this and don't just take Scott's word for this. Let's actually have a bit of a look into this thing together, okay? so. While you're watching this, open up a new tab, okay? And I'm sorry, this is for our Australian viewers only. However, um, I'm assuming, I'm gonna take a stab in the dark and say most banks work the same way. So just have a look at the bank, you know, websites for your particular country, and you'll probably find the same psychology, the same deals behind it. But if not, leave a comment down below because I'd love to see how other countries are doing this. For Australia though, let's go ahead. So. Basically, all you need to know is at this point in time, at the point of shooting, so as of December 2019, 2% is a fantastic interest rate to have on your savings account. With that in mind, anything below 2% starts to get questionable. You know, if it's below 1%, we know it's really, really not great, okay? So with that in mind, let's hunt. So the first thing we do is we bring up our competitors. So we've got four people in the ring and they are, of course, the big four banks. I bring this up because I hate the big four banks and I want to uh, demonstrate why. We go to ANZ and we go to personal. After we go personal, we go bank accounts. 
and let me demonstrate just a fraction of my hatred in a couple of seconds. So we go to bank accounts, savings accounts, scroll on down and I'll draw your attention to these two accounts. We're not gonna look at the investing side of it yet and that's for another video. And um, today we're gonna look at the online savings accounts and the online savings accounts only. So straight away you'll see this ANZ online saver here. Now this isn't for us, this is for people that have like 300K in their account. This is like the epitome of rich people problems. People that have a huge balance in their bank account, so like 300K upwards, often find it very difficult to get any, a uh, competitive interest rate for that amount, right? So they end up bank hopping a lot of the time. So if you see in the terms and conditions here, you do get a great rate of 1.55%, but that is only applicable, or 1.50 of that is only applicable for the first three months. So we don't want this account because we want something that's gonna last us for a while, right? Not just three months. So then we'd look at the ANZ Progress Saver. And this is more competitive anyway. It's 1.6% per annum. That's applicable for as long as we meet those terms. So that's really what we'd wanna go for here. That's our first competitor. Let's see how Commonwealth Bank stacks up. So we'll go into the Commonwealth Bank website and we go banking. From banking, we're gonna to go to savings accounts and term deposits. And I just wanna illustrate something really quickly here. We go into the Lynette Bank Saver account and this isn't for us either. Why do I say that? Because again, you've only got a bulk of your interest rate, 1.55% of it actually, for the first five months. So you're only getting a competitive rate for five months. Why would we go for that when we can have a rate for as long as we have the bank account with the institution, right? For that, we're gonna look at their Goal Saver account instead. And again, with the Goal Saver account, if you wanted to get anywhere near the interest amount that ANZ is offering of 1.60 per annum, you're gonna have to have over $250,000 in your account. I'm not even making this stuff up. If you don't, if you're in a, the same boat as me, and I think a lot of people watching this, you're gonna have either 50 or between 50 and 250K in your account. And these are the interest rates that you're gonna look at. So again, really not competitive at all, um, 0.9 or 1.25. Okay, let's move on to NAB. So we go NAB Bank, we go Personal, and we go uh, bank accounts, savings accounts, and then we have a bit of a look at what they're offering. So I want again, the NAB I saver is not for us. Why? Because we're looking for this disqualifying element here, which is you'll get this for the first four months and then after that, it'll drop down to 0.11%. So again, not for us, that's for the bank hoppers. For now, we look at the NAB reward saver, which will offer the 1.5% per annum, as long as uh, certain conditions down here are being met. So um, again, that's pretty competitive, but it doesn't, it's not enough to take out ANZ. Let's have a look at Westpac, see if they can do any better. All right, so Westpac, we go personal, and then we go to their bank accounts, and from bank accounts to savings on this side here. And then we'll look at the several different savings accounts that they have. So we, they have some for kids and teens, for short-term savers, and then for regular savers. So you can probably imagine what the short-term savers are gonna be. That's gonna be an interest rate for a couple of the months. We're looking at the regular savers, where we're gonna find out more. And we've got 1.55% in total. So that includes 0.45 standard variable rate, and then 1.10 bonus each month you grow your balance, which is unique. So again, none of these free banks are able to dethrone ANZ so far. Let's see what ING can do. This is one of the ones that uh, Scott Pape recommends. So we go bank and save. We go to uh, personal savings, all personal savings, and we'll have a bit of a look at their accounts. And boom, have a look at that. So the savings maximizer, 1.95% if you have an everyday transaction account with them. And if you're making uh, $1,000 deposit into the account and five card payments. So basically, just if you're using them as your one and only bank, really. And um, we've, we've also got the savings accelerator, specifically for people with an account of uh, $150,000 and over. So this is a pretty competitive bank at the minute. If we go to UBank, we can see that uh, they're also really competitive. Banking, savings accounts, 2.10%, which is the same catch as ING. They really sort of want you to have an everyday transaction account with them and to be using it regularly. And uh, that is, 
what you'll find with a lot of these other fringe banks is that you know their main focus is going to be attracting you as a long-term customer of theirs with the big four you'll notice a lot of their uh, conditions are you know just put your money in and don't take it out this is because they know that they already have a wealth of customers right so they're not trying to attract new customers they don't need to um, otherwise why would you have this um, but you know that, that's their prerogative and it's your prerogative as to whether or not you want to stay with one of the big fours or if you want to go for somebody who's going to be a little bit more competitive like ING, Bank, or the many other ones out there. Now a lot of people are concerned about going with one of these big, uh, well, a lot of people are concerned about going with one of the fringe banks in case they go bust, um, but here in Australia the Australian government uh, guarantees your money is protected up to an amount of like 200k with these banks. So until we reach that amount, guys we really don't need to worry about that. What Scott Pape's saying, he has done his research, but you've done yours now and you know how to do it in the future as well. Okay, so knowing that we're going to go ahead with the barefoot steps. So the next part of that is to set up four accounts of ING, two of them being an everyday savers account and two of them being just your everyday transaction account. So two everyday transaction accounts and two everyday saving accounts. And we're gonna call the two everyday accounts, we're gonna call one of them daily expenses and we're gonna call the other one splurge, okay? That's your everyday transaction accounts. When it comes to your savings accounts, we're gonna set up two of those as well. We're gonna call one smile and we're gonna call one fire extinguisher. So now that we've got all of those set up, we're gonna set up a savings account with a completely different financial institution. And then the purpose of this is to try and make it difficult to get to. So we're not going to use ING, we're sure as hell not going to use any of the big four banks. Barefoot Investor recommends that you use UBank, um, because again they are pretty competitive with their interest rate. Um, so we're just going to follow those steps as well. We'll set it up with UBank and we're going to call this we're going to call this bank account Mojo. Now I know that these names sound a little bit weird, but trust me, they all come in very, very handy in future steps. So for now, let's just set that up and take some, have some faith and see where it goes. That's all for today, guys. Um, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed your first uh, barefoot date night. We are now one step closer to becoming financially secure at least. So um, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time, hopefully, with a, uh, another lovely meal. Cheers.